Hey everyone, I'm John Nancy with Chocolate Alchemy. Today I want to go over roasting profile notation. You're going to come across these anytime you're on my website and looking at how to roast a cocoa bean. Uh, whenever you're on our stores, there's a breakout tab that shows roasting recommendations and whether that's in a drum roaster or the beam or, or even your oven, you may see some variation of a string of numbers. Um, and in the case of a drum roaster or the beam or, that's what I want to go over today. It's if you haven't had the opportunity to go back and read Ask the Alchemist 200 through 206 where I go into nauseating detail about all of this, and you may want to do that. Again, it's 200 through 206. Um, this will give you a bit of a primer on what those strings of numbers look like. All right, so without further ado, I want to jump into it. Um, up here, uh, we have a graph that too many drum roasters they'll recognize, and a lot of people like data loggers, and you can do this through Artisan or any number of uh, profile capturing you know, software. And basically what it's showing is how the temperature changes for a roast over time. And for cocoa at least, I've broken these out into a set of temperatures and ranges that I find uh, correlate to different parts of the roast that help you develop flavor. And they just were made, they made nice benchmarks and landmarks for the notation. So in particular, uh, just to give you a bit of a review so we know what we're doing here, I break uh, cocoa roasting into three segments. Um, a drying phase, which is from the time you start the roast until you get up to 212 degrees. Um, basically, the point water boils, so the drying phase. Um, the next couple minutes is one I've termed the development phase, and it goes up to 232 degrees, and that may seem like an odd number, um, but really if you think of it in terms of it's a 20 degree jump from 212, it simply makes the math easier, which is why I picked it in specific. There's nothing special about 232 degrees, except it's 20 degrees higher than 212. So there's the mystery solved right there. Um, and then finally, the final temperature is just that. It's the end of roast temperature, it can be a variable, um, but it's the last number in the scheme of temperatures we're, we're talking about. All right, so these are the different sections we're talking about. And as an example, um, if you haven't come across this notation, it has a bunch of different forms, and by the end of this video, we'll have gone through all three of them. But just in the simplest case, um, what that can look like is this. Uh, you have basically three sets of numbers. Now technically four, and again this is just an example, and I will, I know from right now I'll be erasing it. Um, these are just elapsed times, and this is the general form you're going to see it. A number, a slash, another number, a slash, uh, another number, an at sign, and the end temperature, okay? And I, again, I said, there's going to be three different forms this can take. And with that, I want to walk through an example roast and show you how you would read those and how you would write them out yourself. Um, basically, we're just doing basic education here. Not really profile roasting, but profile roasting notation. All right, so I don't want you to get confused. I just wanted you to see the basic form of that. So for the moment, I'm going to go ahead and take that off. We want it to go away because it has, other than form, no relation to the set of numbers we're going to do here. All right, so we have a roast going on. And I didn't bring this one up, so I'll address it now. This two, or excuse me, 132 is nothing more than this 
point in the curve where, again, you'll see in all drum roasters, where you had a hot air temperature, you dumped in cold beans, and it took this length of time before the beans and the thermocouple were the same temperature. So basically, it's, a, it's, a, it's an artifact of measurement. It's not real, but it's very consistent. You're always going to see it. And in a lot of notations, this is uh, labeled out TAT. It's just the acronym for turnaround time. That simple. Nothing more. All right. So that's what we're, we're doing right here. It's a turnaround time of, two, of 132. Um, and we are saying, for this particular one, it took four minutes. All right? The next stage is our drying phase, where we're getting to 212 degrees. Here, the total elapsed time, basically an additional eight minutes, the elapsed time from the beginning of the roast is 12 minutes. Uh, this little triangle here, it's known as a delta symbol, it just means change or difference. So all we're doing, all I'm recording here is these are what we got off the roaster. We want delta F or the change in temperature. In this case, it's 212 minus 132 or 80 degrees. Same thing. We want the elapsed time in this drying phase. And so for this particular one, it is 12 minus 4 or 8 minutes. And then we do some very basic math, which if you think about it for half a moment, you're very familiar with. This is degrees per minute. It is basically the speed of the roast, and you're used to it. You're used to miles per hour or kilometers per hour. Uh, we're used to this kind of thing all the time. So basically, think of it as speed and you'll be good. Uh, the units don't matter, but in regards to understanding it. Um, so it's feet per minute, and it's just this little math. Fahrenheit, I said feet per minute, I meant degrees Fahrenheit per minute. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, it is just the Fahrenheit, 80, divided by the minutes, 8. And that is a very simple 10 degrees Fahrenheit per minute. That's the speed of the roast. 10 miles per hour if you want to think about it. Nothing more than that. To carry on, the next stage I told you is going to be 232 degrees. In this example, it took a total from the beginning of the roast of 14 and a half minutes. I said I was doing this, this 232 to make the math simple. And so that's literally all this number is. It's always going to be 20, no matter what. The, the temperature difference in the development phase is always 20 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a definition. Um, and in this particular case, it's taking two and a half minutes, 14 and a half minus 12, two and a half. At this point, same thing, just how fast we're going. 20 divided by two and a half, and it's eight. All right, coming into the home stretch here, and we're just doing the same thing over and over. So here we have an end temperature, 262 degrees. And, you know, of course, for this example, I'm keeping the math simple, but it's also a very valid curve and a very valid profile. Um, the change in temperature, 262 minus 232, it's 30 degrees. As I promised, very simple math. It's taken five minutes, so 19 and a half minus 14 and a half. It's taken five minutes to do that. And 30 divided by five, it's six. That gives us everything we need now to build these three different profile notations. All right, so let's list them out. Uh, the very simple one is if you're in front of the roaster, 
you would record elapsed time. And this one I was just giving, giving you for the sake of knowing what our speed was. We actually don't need to record it. It's not important. Uh, so we would just record these three numbers. 12, 14 and a half, 19 and a half, and we need to know what temperature did we go to, because that's a variable depending on the bean and your roast preferences. If I was being a rigorous scientist or chemist that, in a way I am, um, I'm actually going to break rule and tradition here and leave off that that is 262 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, partly because I, I, I find if you know what you're reading, you put it in automatically and context is everything. And for <laughs> all of you civilized folks who actually use Celsius, um, you know for a fact there's no way you're taking your beans to 262 degrees Celsius. So let us savages use that number. You'll have a different one. Um, but context is going to tell you whether this is Celsius or Fahrenheit. All right, that's simple. Um, the, uh, so this is elapsed time notation. Again, it's, an, it's, it's helpful at the roaster when you're developing a roast profile. You're literally recording what you did. All right. The next one is what I like is called slope notation. This column here. Uh, it's also, you know, speed notation. In the coffee world, it can also be known as the rate of rise or ROR. Uh, they're all the same thing. Just become slightly multilingual with this stuff because everybody uses subtly different uh, terminologies. It's all the same thing. Uh, so for this one, for the exact same profile written a different way. It is 10, 8, 6 at 262. How do you know these are different? Well, it's simple in that this one always goes up. The times are always counting up. The, here, you literally can't. You can't have 10 minutes to in the drying phase, and then only eight minutes a time later on. So you know it can't be live notation. So it's got to be slope. Again, context matters. Um, so I find this as a way of understanding, and this is beyond the scope of this talk, but, a, but in a general sense, I have this because it's a way of understanding how you need to control the roaster. This, as you would you know, come to understand, is a very classic profile that is not aggressive, it's not gentle, it's normal. And it's a fast way to read it, like go 30 miles an hour, then go 20 miles an hour, then go 10 miles an hour. We think that way. The last notation is one I tend to use when I've already developed a profile and I'm at the roaster trying to reproduce it. Uh, as you would learn by reading, as the Alchemist 200 through 206, um, the length of the drying phase does not deeply matter. Uh, there's a ton to unpack there, but it's not germane to this conversation. But for that reason, I record in this last one, I record the drying phase as a variable. Classic algebra, it's just an X. Um, I don't leave it blank because you want to know you didn't just forget a number. So there's just the X there. The other number you're going to use then is this length of time of each profile. So for this particular one, it's the two and a half minutes. And then the five minutes. And as always, 262 degrees. I find this helpful because when I talk about, again, profiles, our brains work well with how long should the segment be. And so when I say, you know, the development phase should be between two and four minutes, 
you can do the math up here. It's totally not useful here, but it is here. And likewise, if I say go at least three minutes in the finishing phase, and you can go up to six minutes, it's a quick way to read that. So that's why I found, depending where you are and your use for the profile uh, notation, which one you use. Uh, that's basically everything. So I, I do realize, and I'm just going to review, these can indeed look like just strings of numbers, but I hope this yeah, clarifies it, basically. Pulls the cart back, lets you read something that was before uh, mysterious jargon. Um, but that's it. You've got lapse time, speed, and segment time. I hope that helps a lot. Uh, if it doesn't, you can always reach me directly by email, alchemist at chocolatealchemy.com. Please leave comments below. Feel free to ask questions there. I will clarify them to the best of my ability. Uh, that's about all I have. Take care, folks. Thank you. That was even better.